husband has great hair. But every year, his barber, Pat the barber, has a picture up of somebody getting his hair cut, shaking his hand, shaking her hand. And it's always a bald guy. I'm thinking, what gives? My husband's got great hair. Not that bald guys aren't fabulous, but I'm just wondering, why is that? Why doesn't she have my husband with great hair showcasing her wonderful work, but she chooses a bald guy? She chooses a bald guy because he is a highly paid CEO. And you can check this out at my Boston Symphony program, and you will see tons of CEOs in the back. Because guess what? They pay for most of the concert. And here is, is that bald guy over here who is the president of Bank of America. Now, is this fair that he gets this honor when my husband, the lowly registered, unemployed registry worker, doesn't? Well, I would say yes. Because CEOs deserve what they're getting. Why is that? Because they do more. They produce more. They deserve more. And that's why they should get 500 times what my husband gets. <laughs> now, I was reading yesterday that Amazon workers want to get paid for standing in line. Yeah, they want to get paid for standing in line when they check out. They have to go through security. And I'm thinking, you know, really, it's, that's the level that we're talking about, that you get what you contribute. If your job is packing books, guess what? That's what you get. CEOs have a lot, lot more responsibility than someone packing books. And that's what it is. Now, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about, would you like a minimum wage worker to work on your car, or would you like a master somebody, master work, master mechanic working on your car? I would say that you probably prefer that. I'm going back to when I was in school. And I remember the teacher told my father that I better take typing so I could get a job. And my father rebutted. He said, well, you know, if she can't do anything else, she can be a guidance counselor. Well, I'm happy to tell you, I did learn to type, but I learned something in that typing class. It wasn't typing. It was one of those moral stories they made you type out. And it was about a parakeet that got a reward for doing his typing lesson. And the reward was a peanut. And of course, the parakeet kept typing because he got a peanut. But the parakeet didn't want to take typing two. <laughs> and because the parakeet didn't take typing two, and furthermore didn't learn shorthand, and forget about computers, the parakeet was always working for peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> now, doesn't it seem to you that the people who scream about the excessive corporate pay, doesn't it seem to you that they're just people who are stuck working for peanuts? That they don't appreciate what goes into a corporate job. People who take corporate jobs, often they work their way up to this position. And guess what? They're responsible for everything. Sometimes it doesn't work out so well. Sometimes these people put their lives on the line and they leave with only a golden parachute. But I have to tell you, that the people who make my symphony subscription possible. And I have to say, when they call me to ask for money, I say, you know what, we're saving up so we can afford the subscription. And then they hang up. But the people that make my symphony possible are the CEO of Bank of America, EMC, Arabella, Copley Plaza, Commonwealth Worldwide, I thank these CEO, CEOs, and you know what? They are worth every penny. That was great storytelling <laughs> and very interesting angle of why the CEOs deserve what they are paid for and how they are helping the economy, Ruth. Now let us invite our second speaker, Bill Lewis, speaking against the argument, CEO of reasonable comp compensation, the notion about whether it's reasonable, not reasonable. Bill?
Madam Debate Master, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all people are created equal, and that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, and that among these rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Do we believe that? Is that what we want our country to be? How many people want that to be the country that they live in? How many people believe that, that is the country that they live in? Do you believe that that kid, Trayvon Martin, who was gunned down because he was wearing a hoodie, had the same rights and opportunities that Paris Hilton had? Do you think that the people in Ferguson, Missouri, have the same rights and same access to the law that O.J. Simpson had? Do you think that there is a difference in this country between those who are very rich and the rest of us? And that is a fundamental question of CEO compensation. Why does a CEO get what a CEO gets? If you are running your own business, then you are responsible for your business and you get to take the profits from that. If you are running a publicly held corporation where you are taking money from your fellow citizens and you are given by your government a set of privileges that nobody else gets, then you are held to a different standard. And officially within the United States, the standard for CEOs within a corporation, the standard is that the board is fiduciarily responsible to hire the person best for the job at a wage which is most reasonable. And the question is, do you think that anyone is worth a hundred million dollars a year? I made a hundred thousand dollars a year. Is there anyone you can think of which is a thousand times better than I am? <laughs> The reason that CEOs get the money that they get is because the board pays them that much. And the board just happens to be comprised of the CEOs of the fellow com other companies. And of course, our CEO will be voting on their compensation. There's no way that any of these people are worth what they're being paid. There are a million other people who would love to have that job and are equally capable as this person to take that job. But because this person has all those buddies on the board, he gets the job. And of course, it's almost always a he. But it doesn't make any difference whether it's a she. They get the job and they get insane compensation which they have done nothing to earn. And then it just replicates itself, power upon power upon power. If we want a democratic nation, I believe the most valuable thing we could possibly do is just say the board of a corporation will comprise the telephone book. Take a telephone book, throw 12 darts, that's your board. That will give you a democratic nation that we really want. Are CEOs worth a hundred million dollars a year? Well, I'll save it for the end to see what um, you all have to say about that. Let's. I'd like to take a couple of minutes <clears throat> yes. to put the word back onto the board. So in the meantime, the two debaters can write their rebuttal. Well, we have a third speaker. We have a third speaker. Well, he is neutral. So he will, he will be next. Yes. Okay. Exactly. After he, okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you, William. I'll move the word back. How did that word disappear? Okay. Thank you, Carlton. Thank you, William. Well, let's invite our third speaker, Fred Zhao, speaking from the neutral stance. Please, <laughs> help me welcome.
fragile. Hello, Toastmasters and distinguished guests. What is reasonable for a CEO to be paid? We would like to, or I would like to present that it is reasonable for CEOs to be paid somewhat higher than an average employee in their company, but not to be extravagantly more. And what is extravagant? Well, let's look at a case study. Ben & Jerry's is a company that we all know of making ice cream. When the company was formed, they made an agreement that the CEO of the company would not be paid more than five times the amount of the lowest paid employee in the company. And that agreement held for 16 years until the first CEO decided to retire, at which point they could not find another CEO willing to take the same agreement. <laughs> so they raised the factor to seven to one. And then over the years, a few more years later, they raised it to 17 to one. Mm. Eventually in 2000, the company was acquired by Unilever. And when it was acquired, that, at that point, they started being secret about the CEO's compensation. So that's something to think about as I go through what we might think is reasonable for some, but not reasonable for others. So what does the CEOs do? They come in for their companies. They try to set the strategy for the company. They set some of the values and the mission. They also do the overall management of the company, but the CEOs do not actually do the actual work of, let's say, if you're a car company, making the cars, or if you're, if you're an accounting company, the actual person going out and auditing the other firms. So, then the question would become, what is it about the strategy, about the, the direction, about those types of things that the CEO does that makes it so important or not so important to the company? So on the one hand, we can argue that, that they make the final decision about which way the company's going to go. And if they make the wrong decision, several times in a row, for example, the company will no longer exist, and all those jobs that exist below them will disappear. On the other hand, they don't actually do the lifting of the product. So on that side, one can say that they shouldn't be compensated too far beyond their overall workers because they're being supported by their overall workers. So, I would say that judging by the case study of Ben and Jerry's, and it, it's tried performance for five to for 16 years, that something like five to one or even 20 to one is a reasonable type of factor because five to one would mean that if you got, had an employee at the bottom paying being paid forty thousand dollars the top person being six hundred two hundred thousand okay which is not too bad our president makes four hundred thousand so if you had a factor of twenty to one the bottom person being twenty thousand which is a little bit lower than the than the median income some of the states and then if you look at this institution, MIT, the MIT president gets paid about a million dollars. And if you figure that the lowest point is about, let's say, here also $20,000, that's a 50 to 1. So somewhere in that range seems to be a reasonable one. But no, above 100 or more, more than that seems to be unreasonably 
inequitable. And so we'll leave you with that food for thought. Keeping the ratio down to a certain amount is, is probably more equitable than allowing it to float the way it is currently. Madam Three Master. organizational expert will be someday able to see and act upon what Fred said. Now we are going into the segment of the rebuttals and cross-examination. Uh, speakers, are you ready or we can wait? Okay. Um, also, we would need to give Fred at the end a little bit of time for his own cross-examination rebuttal as well. So what we'll do is we'll have Ruth and Bill speak, and then Fred will have a minute in between. Would you be able to time that, Roger? Yeah, okay. So a minute in between for you to get ready, and we'll hear you. Then we'll go into the, the audience input. Well, let's welcome Ruth Levitsky for her rebuttal and cross-examination. of happiness. It was an ice cream cone that we hold up as an ideal for our country. But you know what? Never included everybody. Didn't include you if you didn't own property. Certainly didn't include you if you were a woman and if you were any other skin color than the Mayflower didn't include you either. That was our ice cream ideal. Something to strive for, but not real. What should a CEO get when a CEO gets? It's like that shampoo commercial, because they're worth it. <laughs> they're the ones that take the risks. Again, they're the ones that are putting their lives out on the line. Sometimes it doesn't work out so well. And let's just take this life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. What these highly, highly talented people do for society. Now, how many of you would rather go see Stevie Wonder at, I believe, at the garden, or would you rather go hear the guitar player at the subway or Park Street? Well, one of them is free, the other you really have to pay a lot for. One is the experience of lifetime, the other may be an experience of lifetime or an et cetera headache. <laughs> There's an argument that you get what you pay for. And as our neutral speaker illustrated, it starts to melt when you pay them less. You know, it's nice to say, Everybody's equal, but the reality is like George Orwell said, some are more equal than others. And I know that we don't like to admit that, but it really is true. We are a meritocracy. And you know what? When I hear paid too much, that is just anti-American. That is against what we stand for. Because you know what? In this country, everybody can make it. Everybody can pull themselves up. And all I think about when they say, paid too much. I think about the symphony. I think about who pays for the symphony. And you know what? I don't see occupied Boston in my <laughs> symphony program. Do I love the Koch brothers? Well, they do the cancer center over here for integrative research. And our friend Bill Gates, who was making lots of money, he is the Bill Gates Foundation, which I would argue is doing a whole lot more for society than our friends in the Occupy movement, or move on. Some is talk, some is action. You get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to invite our second speaker, Bill Lewis, for his side of rebuttal and cross-examination. Bill? <clears throat> Are the compensations exuriant? <laughs> you brought up the DSO. And yes, you do see my name 
in your program mm. because I volunteered for the DSO. <laughs> I rub shoulders with those CEOs and I appreciate what they did for my orchestra. I ran the children's day, uh, events. I taught the clarinet and I didn't get compensated. Not money, I got compensated. The feeling of pleasure, of satisfaction, of giving to my fellow human beings, of allowing children to see music in a different fashion. You ask the question, <clears throat> oh, they take risks. Well, do they? Is J.P. Morgan in jail for criminal activities associated with what happened in 2008? Nope. How could that be? Is the CEO of Bank of America in jail for falsifying foreclosure papers? No. Are these people worth what they are paid? No. Could you have found, well, let's, let's ask our audience right here. How many people would take a job to be CEO of a company for $200,000 a year? Who would take that job? Whoa, how could that be? Fred, you told us that they couldn't find anyone. And here are 20 <laughs> people ready right now. And I guarantee you that some of these people are more skillful than the individual that they have at their corporate desk right now. The reason they couldn't find anyone is because they're bored with looking for one of their own and because they wanted to give someone lots of money to become one of their own. It is an issue of oppression. Within the Tea Party, I go to Tea Party meetings. Within the Tea Party, we talk about crony capitalism. The Tea Party was formed because of what happened with the banks. We, citizens of this country, we gave our lives away to the banks. How many people know someone who had their house foreclosed on? How is that possible? This country needs things done. There are millions of people who want to do work. There's work to be done, and somehow it doesn't happen. And the reason it doesn't happen always comes back to the same the thing. It comes back to the top because our CEOs are able to manipulate the system. Part of the reason they manipulate the system is because they are so insanely wealthy for things that they didn't do, that they are not worth. I want a country where all people have equal opportunities. I want a country where the exceptions that you talked about are not true. I want a country where all people have those rights and where democracy holds the day. And when we give our corporations and our CEOs insane amounts of money for things that they aren't worth, that they never earned, we destroy that democracy. So, let us take control of our country, of our corporations, and build the country and the world. <laughs> but hopefully Fred does. So now we'll have a minute for Fred to prepare his argument. And the, in, in the meantime, I would also like you all to be thinking about your perspective and hopefully prepare to share that with us. I'm thinking maybe I should open the door. I am feeling very high. Yeah. Anybody? Should I do that? I actually am disappointed. It shouldn't have been me in the talking. We should have had some of our feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay.
But oh well. Did you have to sign up ahead of time? So no. Oh, do you just okay. Great. Uh, Thank you. Fred is ready. Ago, so we'll ask you to Please help me welcome Fred. Well, Toastmasters distinguished guests again. Ruth makes a good point that CEOs in her program book are for certain large companies and provide, provide support for the symphony. And it's not, for example, it's not the employees of the company necessarily providing it. But I'm going to point out that those CEOs are not necessarily the ones paying for it. It's their companies that are paying for the the Boston Symphony. And so the CEOs help make the decision to do that, but it's not their salary that's being used to support the symphony. Yes, the and Ruth makes another point that they do put their lives on the line for the strategy they choose for the company, but in many cases the company will still retain them even if for a while the stock goes down and then if they do end up being fired they have a very good severance package usually for not even if something did go terribly wrong with the company. So they may make up quite well even when the company is doing poorly. Bill makes a good point about the about CEOs not necessarily being jailed for corporate crimes. So in that sense, the, the CEOs are allowed to take risks, but they may not necessarily, they may have special rules because of the way the government treats them, where if those risks go wrong, as they did in the financial crisis, they are not punished for those crimes. I'll also point out something about Bill's comment, which he said he wants a land of equal opportunity. Well, we do have the land of opportunity, maybe not exactly as equal as one might like, but equal opportunity does not mean equality of result. And that is something that should be noted too. I will note that something about this economist Piketty's research pointed out that over the last four decades, income inequality in the United States has risen primarily because of increases in wages for the top earners and not as much because of other reasons, let's say. So that points out that if inequality is something that we care about, then the amount that CEOs do get paid is a very big factor in this type of consideration. So I'll leave you with the thought that I had before, which is CEOs certainly should get paid more than the average worker, but they should not be paid by too many factors more. And if you look at the CEOs today, many of them are paid in the thousands of times more than the average worker. Yet the average worker cannot make a living wage. And this battle contest. I mean, the, I'm just curious, because CEO salaries set the standard for everyone else, so obviously a company where the CEO is making much, like a nonprofit, the employees are not making very little, and conversely, a company where the CEO is making millions of dollars, like Bank of America, and the employees, in many cases, make six figures. You know, it's, it's, it's relative. Couldn't you make the argument that the CEO should make more money because it sets the pay scale for everyone else? I understand the ratio factor, but I'm just saying, like, relatively speaking. Well... I would say that on some level, if you're looking at this, the pace of being set by it, it's not actually, it's not really set quite 
as um, as easily because CEOs have a, have from the board get access to stock options, stock grants, and perks. many types of perks like corporate jets and things like that 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 the average employee would never have a chance to be uh, accessible to. And those are all sort of included in their compensation in a way. And so in many ways, CEOs are given quite a bit more than, than what just what their amounts are being to ascend in the scales. As to whether or not that's good or bad, I'll just point out that it has become more of an issue over the last let's say 10 to 20 years. Before that, the disparity wasn't quite as large. 